friendship that can't or won't be broken by mm. times and seasons. Wow. That's a solid friendship. So solid friendship is a friendship that would not be broken, that would not be broken by times and seasons. So irrespective of the season, the time you find yourself, that friendship is still existing. So again, thank you for joining us. And we would also be glad to have you share your comments with us. You know, um, share your own feedback with us. Share what has worked for you also if you're married with us. We'll be so glad to hear that. And we're talking about building solid friendship. So how long have we been friends for? Um, we've been friends for... Huh. We've been married 17 so, years. Yeah. We've been so how long have we been friends? 22 years. Because we started out as friends. Mm -hmm. And then by the time we got married, uh, we continued from here. We did not stop. But some people over time have gotten married and then it just looks like things changed. They were very good friends until they got married. What do you think is responsible for, you know, people being very good friends? And then marriage happens and then before you know it, it's like they are not fighting. For instance, somebody... And they've been friends for, they've been dating or courting for like, say, six years. Everything seemed okay. Then they get married in two months. They are so, there's so much conflict. If you're a team building expert or someone that's into team building, it's, it's based, you get to hear things like forming, storming, norming, performing, which are uh, basically the stages of team building. And if you call yourself a team, it, it, it makes sense that you can apply that same principle on your relationship. When you meet someone for the very first time, you meet a lady or you meet a guy, you're excited. There's nothing they basically will do that to get you angry most of the time. You're just meeting together for the first time. You're forming. Your excitement, you can take the person's flaws, you can take excuses. The person comes late for your meeting, it's okay. The person's food is not looking good, it's okay. Mm. And then quickly, after forming, it's a storming stage where you get, it's normal. Uh, they call it sea finish. That's the way you see, have you have seen the person happens happens in pre marriage relationships, also happens in marriage. And so you cannot take most of the things you could take, you know. And then over time, uh, it's believed that if you do the right thing, that you get to uh, the norming stage mm -hmm. where things become normal. And then from there, you go to the performing stage. You're still, it doesn't mean that you won't go through all the issues you go through in all the stages, it will repeat. Uh, but the fact that your friendship is strong helps you to navigate every step mm -hmm. of the way. So how do you get to that point where your friendship cannot be broken by times and seasons? I mean, your marriage will throw at you different times, you know, different challenges. How do you break friendship such that all of those seasons won't take it away from you? And um, one of the things you said now, we talked about the fact that... Um, Sometimes it looks like we are just jamming each other. I mean, you were in a relationship before you got married. But all of a sudden, you are married and it's looking like um, you can no longer be friends. Why are we quarreling more now? So it starts with forming. And of course, forming in the stage where, you know, we're still trying to build what you have and everybody's still, you know, trying to put themselves together. And then um, storming is when you now begin to realize the differences between you people. And then, of course, norming is when you begin to adjust to the differences and then appreciate your similarities. And then performing is when you have mastered the act of um, understanding your differences and appreciating it, which is what we are talking about today. So building solid friendship, I think, begins from the point where you accept the fact that we are different. In fact, for a long time in our marriage, they were, I used to, there were some things I wanted you to do the way I wanted it. Yeah. So, but after a while, I realized this person is not you and this person does not think like you. So you need to allow him space to be him. So it's interesting how we want people to change into what we want. But we don't also want to change into what they want. Yeah. So one of, I think one thing to, to help us build solid friendship mm. is to make an effort to change into what that person wants, while the person also makes an effort to change into what you want. So both of us are married, we've been married 17 years, and we've been friends for 22 years. So while I want him to change, you know, change in quotes, into what I want, I also need to make an effort to change into what he, what he wants. Not expecting to change into what I want, and I'm not willing to do anything about changing into what he wants. So it's that process of trying to change and adapt that usually causes the conflict that we experience in marriage. I've always said it. One of the things that causes conflicts uh, in marriage and relationship, as it were, particularly marriage, is this uh, big to change people. And I've always said, maybe there are two levels of changes. 
the level where you know this person can be shifted or can be it's called form shifting you can shift the person from this form to this form effortlessly or with little effort and there's a stage where you know you have to work extremely mm. hard hard to change the person you're trying to change someone from what the person is to what the person is not not change somebody into what they are not we can only make you know we can only help the person become a better version of who they are mm -hmm. we are not experts we are just um a couple that is extremely committed to being happy we are sharing what has worked for us and we believe it can work for anyone who also tries to practice and then um, we also expect to get comments and feedback share your comments share your feedback with us okay so it's important to know that there is no marriage that is without challenges as a matter of fact we have our challenges and we have our moments one thing that has helped us we know that conflicts happen there are some things that um conflicts shouldn't touch we understand that we are different we understand that we can have conflicts sometimes but we also know that we are not against each other we are a team one of the things that are caused our conflict um I'm pro success. <clears throat> when I set a goal, I want to. I'm, I'm driven. I want to achieve it. My wife is success pro max, <laughs> right? But when she focuses in a particular path, sometimes it's difficult to turn her to face your path. One of the places I got to in life that brought me plenty of peace in my marriage was when I got to a point where I told myself, you know what? There are some things about this man that will never change. Say it again. Say it again. There are some things about my husband that will never change. So help you God. So what do I need to do if I want to be a happy person with him? What I need to do is to live with it. Actually, it's that simple. Live with it. L-I-V-E. Stay alive and be happy in spite of what has refused to change. So I got to a place where I decided, you know what? Let me focus on the positive thing. I don't want to spend the rest of my life being unhappy because I'm fighting something that I want a man to change. Now, preparing for church on Sunday morning, <laughs> you know, as in, it makes me, in fact, after a while, I was not wondering if I was normal again. I didn't know how bad it was until my children started making me. This is my wife for typical uh, Sunday morning. <laughs> now she's a pastor in church and she needs to get there early. People like us, we are members. <laughs> the morning that I leave for church is the morning I prepare. For the past 17 years, I wake up in the morning and I get my clothes perfect. And I go to church. My wife prepares for church <laughs> four months before the day. She, she shoes she's going to wear, the dress is going to wear, the Bible, she prepares everything way ahead. Most of the time, she's always pissed that I have to, I don't know why it's jealousy that I can put myself <laughs> under seconds. You know, and then wake up, wakes up in the morning, Sunday morning. Hello, uh, when I wake up this morning, the, you people, the, I don't know, the children, are you in the bathroom? Who is in the bathroom? You guys Come are out. now. Come yeah. out of the bathroom. So what's happening? You need to be in church after you get me late. After I get me late, who is going to drive? You know, are you going to be... Oh, I mean, my mind. You see all these shouts between myself and the boys. We are like, this woman, this woman. In this, this particular matter. So I got to a point where I told myself, you are the one who is the pastor, not them. So you cannot force all of them to become pastors because you are a pastor. I mean, you need their support and all, but they cannot. What is priority to you is not priority to them, because it is priority to you by virtue of your position. I mean, all my life, all my adult life, I plan for things way before. If I'm going to go out every day this week, I have everything I'm going to wear every day this week already by now. That's how I live my life. So you now living a kind of life where you have to wake up this morning and prepare this morning. It sounded really, really. In fact, it's it's for me. It's so impossible. It looks like my brain wants to shut down. How do you wake up in the morning and you were not prepared for how that day would go? But I mean, it's not everybody that works like that. So I had to get to a point where I accepted that, and that it's okay for me to be ready for my event three days too, and the other person is ready a day too. It's very okay. We are different people. So that's where it begins. We need to understand that we are from different backgrounds. We have different orientation and we have different priorities. So what's extremely important to you? Maybe 100% important to you, but it's 30% important to your partner. We tend to forget that we are different. Mm. If it means using marker to write, we are different, <laughs> and putting on all the doors in your house, we are different. Yeah, we've talked about what it means to have solid friendship is one that circumstances cannot change, time and seasons cannot break. Can we drive all our marriages to a point where we are performing? It means that we already understand that we are different people, we've accepted the, the, our differences, and then we appreciate our similarities as well and we are coping with that create fun activities yeah be fond of your partner i think that one begins with 
even the way you see your partner. Mm. And, you know, it begins even before marriage or even when your marriage starts. You know, sometimes some people have very solid friendship. They prioritize their partner. But as soon as they get married, things change. Mm. You now prioritize your work, prioritize your children. I mean, some people have children. And then it looks like you're wondering, is it these same people that, is it? I mean, the children came from both of you. How come all of a sudden they are more important than both of you? Mm -hmm. So prioritize your partner over your job, over your children, over your own family, extended family, over your partner's family. Your partner is your priority the moment you get married. If you're able to prioritize your partner, you would value the act of intentional friendship. Okay. Friendship doesn't just happen, especially in marriage. Create fun activities. What are some of the fun activities that we have? We take a stroll together. So one thing we do a lot, we take a stroll together. Prioritize your friendship in mm. private and in public. Mm. Some people are friends with Thank their you. spouse in private, but in public. They don't want to be seen to be friends with their spouse. Tell husbands and wife to hold, hold their hands. hands. I mean, just, just hold their hands like this. Something as simple as this. Look at their faces. You Some can tell people, people can do it. You can tell those that have not held their hands in the last, in the last 50, 150 <laughs> years. It's strange <laughs> to them. So prioritize your friendship in private and in public. Yeah. Some people go, uh, like I said, they are friends with their spouse in private, but in public, they don't want to be seen with their spouse, quote unquote. So you are so going in front. You are going in front. Is coming way behind. I don't understand. They don't even know you part together. Are you see? If if you are walking with your spouse in public, maybe you are taking a stroll because I won't say driving because when you are driving, this one is on this person's side and you are driving together. And the husband is in front, and the wife is in behind, and the wife is in front, or the husband is behind. Except you guys had issues before leaving home. It means you're not proud of each other. In fact, they are talking to themselves. Your, your wife is in front, the husband is behind. They are talking to themselves, and you're wondering the person in front, the person mad, or the person at the back, the person mad. <laughs> but you see, even in friendship, what you say is as important as how you say it, when you say it, why you say it. There are times she brings up a topic. I'm not just, I'm not just in the mood. I don't. If I respond. It will just spoil the entire day for me and for her. So I know what. Just let it lie down, and then we we'll just kill let it. Go. I will just, just let it go. Just say, even kill it. No, forget it. Drop and it for now, at least. For now, just uh, drop uh, it out. Yeah. So one of the things I also learned over time was to know when to bring up issues. Um, something you also said earlier on was understanding that your spouse may not do those things at the time you want it. Mm. So um, me wanting that you wanted me to do the things you wanted me to do. And then it took me a while, but when it was time, I began to do those things. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to fight over it. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that your partner is not you, and they may not respond the way you want. Um, fun activities, chats, when you go out in public, people should know you are married. It should at least make it obvious that you are married. Spend time together. If you're not sitting together, in between, even if you are the person who is busy at that event, go keep you know an eye on your partner. Go check and find out your partner is fine. Yeah. Meaningful hugs. So I didn't know how to do this. I actually learned it from him. So I must give you, I must give you that, <laughs> you know. I didn't know, I mean, growing up, it wasn't a normal thing to receive hugs and all of that. So getting married and then I realized, I mean, almost all the time he's giving you a hug. And I'm like, sometimes he even, I'm like, well, Josh, which one is, you hugged me two hours ago. Why are you hugging me again and all of that? But over time I began to learn. So now what we do is, if we're passing by each other, even in the house, I mean, even our children, they've seen this happen over the years. You're passing by me, I'm passing by you. I mean, we are a couple. So we just stop and give each other a hug. And the hug I'm talking about is not that one that you do like this. One person is doing this, the other person is doing like this. I'm talking about real meaningful hug. The one that both of you are responsive towards. And then you give yourself some seconds, you know, just hold let each other. And then let, let it sink it, in. Let the hug yeah. sink in. It helps you build meaningful connection. So another thing I want to talk about is keeping tabs with each other during the day. Some people go out and they don't even talk to each other throughout the day. We already know you're going to return at night, but it's just important. Even sending funny videos. I mean, some of us already do that. I'm sure that some people even on this yeah. call already do that. You see something that resonates with your partner, with you, and you think it resonates with your partner as well, you just forward the link. Or maybe something that seems for, that looks very funny on the internet, and you just forward so your partner can also laugh. Okay. You know. What, what, what that means is beyond the message the text mm -hmm. or the means or the whatever i sent to your spouse because of the day particularly when you're together it says one thing i'm thinking of you mm. you are on my mind mm. don't wait until when you have conversations or when you go to night to sleep on uh, go on at night to sleep on your bed before you start forming friendship you are at home let your presence be felt at home there's a door you need to pass through some is as if you're coming you as if you're avoiding yourself in your own house mm. your your spouse is coming towards you I clear hug the person, shake the person, tap the person somewhere. Just 
Just just this little tiny tiny connection. Thing. Just connect. Just connect with the person at home. I'm a serious person, and I'm also a very fun person to be with. This moment, I'm serious. I'm trying to address. Especially when you are thinking. When I'm thinking. <laughs> this moment, I'm fun. I'm laughing with the children. I'm pushing. I'm kicking someone. I'm pulling someone's clothes. Now, this is not just restricted to your spouse alone. Mm -hmm. Even your children. You know what you're doing. When you're forming this bond, this friendship you are forming, you're not just doing it for you. You are showing your children what their own relationship with their spouse should, should be. look like. So this effort you're putting in is transgenerational. Don't just do it towards your spouse or do it to your spouse. Do it to your children. Pull someone's hair. Drag, take someone's coat. Just, just tiny things. A sense of friendship mm -hmm. in the home. Now what it does is it makes it sweeter to come back home. Create a home that you look forward to coming back to. Mm -hmm. Create a home the children look forward to coming back to. Create memories that even years after the children leave, when they remember, they want to come back to that house or come back to that setting because you don't have to live in the same house. Mm. How do you manage conflicts, for instance? How, do, how does conflict affect friendship? When we are not talking, when there's a misunderstanding, how do we continue to flow in that friendship? There will always be issues. What you do is, practically speaking, there are days where maybe this one annoyed this one, this person annoyed this person. As much as possible, try to resolve the conflict. Now, resolving the conflict is not automatic. It's not as if you say, oh, yeah, come, let's resolve a conflict. There's what I call essential services. <laughs> what are essential services? The fact that you are, you have a challenge or a, a, a quarrel or misunderstanding, that's the better word, with your spouse, does not mean you should not, can I have a cup? Or, uh, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. So I can tell you, I can tell you for a fact from our side. Let me start with our side. In all the 17 years we've gotten married, no matter how hot the quarrel or the misunderstanding, okay, we're both of the quarrels, not quarrel, misunderstanding has been, my wife must always tell you good morning. By default, good morning. That's a point to start with. I do say, if it pays me very, very well, uh, good morning. <laughs> but at least yes. there's, there's essential services going on, right? So you are not totally focused. Not that you will have issue with somebody. You don't even you don't call. You don't the one the one I, I talk about a lot of times is my dear. If you want to build friendship with your spouse, mm. whether it's your husband or your wife that's cooking the food, eat the food. It's your family food. Eat the food. <laughs> How would you be in a state of conflict because you are not happy with the other person? Then they serve you food, and you refuse the food. It does not make sense to me. So I can speak, I can confidently say in the last 17 years of being married, I have on no account due to a misunderstanding refused food. No. In fact, in one occasion where I made, I was so intentional about refusing the food. After getting angry and leaving the house, when I came back, they had warmed the food and it was on my table and I had to eat as much as possible. Create room where you can still greet yourself. Create room where you can still eat. <laughs> Create room where you can still respond. Mm. So once the essential services are on in a conflict situation, it is easier to resolve the conflict. Right? Okay. Thank you. So another thing I want to talk about still in managing conflict is knowing when to apologize. So I also realized that um, I value our friendship more than the issue I'm trying to prove. So, I mean, there are times where I sincerely don't think I am wrong, but I say sorry. Just like there are times where he also thinks he's not wrong, but he says sorry. So it means I value your friendship over this argument. But again, if you're here and you're listening, and your partner is always the one saying sorry, it's not fair on your partner. You are draining your partner emotionally. Yeah. So one, the sorry shouldn't be coming from one, one side. Person. Not because you know that the person will say sorry, so you don't say anything. After, after one day, two days... She would definitely say sorry. Mm. That's not a good thing to do. So know when uh, to say sorry. Know when to say sorry. Know when to apologize. <laughs> if you're listening to me, there's no rule that mm. says the other partner mm. must verbally say sorry. Mm. I, keep, I say it a lot of times. There are different kinds of sorry language. There's a way your husband will hurt you. And even though he does not open his mouth to say sorry, his body language speaks sorry. Either the way he's, he's suddenly become, becoming extra nice to you, he's buying you gifts, he's doing things he ordinarily would not do. That's a sorry language. Now, I'm not saying 
don't say sorry it's important as much as possible to get to the point where you can actually say i'm sorry but it's not in every case i'm saying this because some people's friendship in marriage has been ruined because mm. the other person has made up his mind or her mind that until he or she opens the mouth to say i'm sorry I will not accept the apology. Hmm. And if you're married to a spouse who has sworn, quote on unquote, never that I will never open my mouth and say sorry. Eventually. Rather, I will inconvenience myself to do all that. You, say, you auntie, you will wait to. You will ruin that friendship. You will ruin that friendship, but brother, you ruin that friendship. I think inside all of this is the ego factor. Hmm. Now, speaking about ego, we've been taught over time that men have ego. Brother, women have ego too. Both men and women have ego. Friendship in marriage is exciting. I don't know how it works for some people, but see, you have a gist. Eh? <laughs> but because you and your spouse, you have been boning for each other for the mm. past three, four, five hours, and something happened, and usually you want to gist him about what happened on your way to work, you cannot wait for the, for the issue to be over for you to give the person that your gist. gist. So until you two, as he's moving closer, to resolve you to be coming closer to resolve mm -hmm. the issue. So if you're like this one, I know how to deal with this one. No matter how angry she is with you, buy roasted corn for her. <laughs> if my wife is angry and you give her roasted corn, she does not eat roasted corn. That means that issue, that issue will never be resolved again. <laughs> but I'm just saying, do what your spouse loves, <laughs> so that you can inch closer to. Because you cannot. How long do you have to spend on earth? Just calculate. Possibly. Mm. Now take away how long you need to spend at work, mm -hmm. and then how how long do you have to live on planet Earth that you be having conflict with your spouse? You'll be talking to each other for three weeks, one month, or you'll be sleeping on the bed for two months, two weeks, even two days because you're angry. You, okay, because you have extra room, you now go and sleep on mm. different bed, mm. or you have only one bed, you now put a mat on the ground and your, your, own house. Bed, your own house and sleep. Meanwhile, just, just to, to show the person. You are lucky the person is a, is, a, is a child of God because if the person is not a good person, that's where you will sleep for the rest of your life. When cold, when cold, mama, you is by yourself, you you mistakenly sleep on the bed. It's already a tough place. You can make it easier in your home. There's no point to prove to your partner. Sometimes, why we have misunderstanding because we are trying to prove a point to each I'll, other. I want to show you. This so person is a partner. Let me see who speaks first. This person is a partner. Talk to you what talk point to you. are you trying to prove? There's no need to prove any point. You are the this point. This person is you. You are the point. 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 Yeah. You are the point. Particularly this period. Mm. This challenging economic period, I say it's becoming more important that you build friendship for the person's physical health, mm. for the person's, your spouse's mental health, emotional, emotional, health. whatever kind of health, it's becoming very important that you build that friendship. It's very important. Like I said, right, when you're building friendship with your spouse, you're not just doing it for you. Mm. You are doing it because you are teaching your children how their relationship can be or can be better. Because ultimately, I mean, why, why, why be in a relationship and, and, and have regrets when you can actually not even get married and enjoy your life? If you must be in a relationship, be in a relationship. And have, if you have, your relationship is not working the way it ought to right now, you can change it. Mm -hmm. The fact that your parents' relationship will not work does not mean your whole relationship should not work. You don't have to do what everybody is doing. It's your family. Mm -hmm. Every family must have its vision its mission and values. Your friendship must be true to your vision, mm. your values, and your mission. Yeah. Just like, just add that. So I came to realize, I actually didn't know this before we got married, but I came to realize that my husband loves his peace. Love, absolute peace, quiet, peace. privacy. My choice of a partner mm. was informed by the right to have peace. I am more effective, I am more creative in a quiet, peaceful environment that's how i'm created mm. so peace is utmost priority to me mm. if you won't give me peace i'm out of the house mm. i'm just saying some of the reasons some not everybody why your spouse doesn't stay back at home and build that friendship is because that's it, that thing is, is essential to them is too much it's not found that raw material mm. that will help them build what they want it's, it's not, not at found all. so for me when I saw that, after a while, I noticed this person loves his peace. He wants to be very happy. He doesn't want to be stressed. I must confess, um, I can be dramatic. And I like to drive my point home. As a person, I like to drive my point home. You must see the way I'm saying it, you know. But I now realize it's not working. This person appreciates his peace so much 
that when you start that your drama, you become a nagging woman. You become a nagging woman. I don't want him to. I don't want to become that woman that he doesn't want to come back home to. I began to know when to let things rest. So the issue doesn't have to get to the end. I don't have to win the argument. I don't have to make him see the way I want him to see it. I can also accept the way he sees it. So I began to do that. Then I also realized that he loves his quiet because he wants to think. He wants to write. When my husband is writing, if you see his face, you think he's fighting war. When he starts writing, if you see his face, when he's typing anything, you, don't, you dare not interrupt. So initially, I didn't, I wasn't cool with that. And then I would be pushing, well, once in a while, even now, I'm still not cool with it. Once in a while, I'll say, why not just stop and just listen to what I have to say? But I've become better. So I don't complain again. I go do something else, come back to check if it's now available, you know. And then over time, I've begun to learn to, why am I sharing this? You need to understand your partner. Then you know when to come in and how to come in. Understand what works for your partner. Know when to come in, know how to come in, but prioritize your partner. Mm -hmm. So I want to make this very clear, you know, when it comes to friendship. For you to be able to build friendship with your partner, you need to see your partner as a friend. Mm -hmm. So if you see your wife as... Who oh, she said, I beg you, listen, women, all these women, all these things they say about women, it may be very difficult to build that kind of friendship and connection with that woman. Mm -hmm. If you see your husband as, I beg, if you leave me, I want to live my life. So, your girls, your friends, your siblings, your parents are more important in your life than your partner. You may not have that kind of friendship you so desire. Mm -hmm. There is nowhere in the Bible, <laughs> I know what you want to say, where it is written that the man must pay for the food. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Learn to take your husband out. Learn to yeah. take your husband. Honey, you know what? Dress up, or oh, when are you dress up, I'll dress, I'll dress you up. <laughs> Red, I'm taking you out. Yeah. Taking you out. You, I want, I want to be a good man. Take you out. Yeah. I, I want to spoil you. Oh, yeah. Right? Let his expectations be higher. Then take him to if he's booker, a fine booker. He can let him sit can out and eat a mala. You afford. are the one. When you tell people, I took my husband out. Nobody, not it's not anybody's business. Mm. You took him out. You took him out. Those things are. They are, they, are, they are crediting it to your account, mm. to your love account. Mm. Those things are dropping your love account. Mm. Then your guy, you too, sometimes, uh, my wife, I'm taking your address up. I come back with sometimes 10 mm. p.m. I get on my bike. Oh, yeah, join me. She joins me. And off, off we get go. into the car. At 10, we disappear. PM, yes, and we go one hour, two hours. Sometimes we come back 12 midnight. Now, like she said, because of the insecurity, we had to stop it. But we are saying, don't let time be a barrier. Mm. If it's one hour, you can snatch to grow your friendship. If it's two hours, see, I believe when it comes to friendship, there are three kinds of friendship. Mm, okay. The friendship you plan to have, mm. the friendship you, you actually have, have and the one and you want wish you had. It's be intentional about you know date night. It doesn't even have to be nights, afternoon, mornings, just create it. So you can set a goal for it. Initially, when it didn't become a when it wasn't a culture yet for us. Now it's a culture, we don't even need to set a date. Initially, we used to say, Oh, every so 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 day of the month. Or once a month or twice a month. You can start that way if it's not a culture for you already. It makes it easier. Mm. So another thing we can do is to be more intentional with even our gifts. So I know that it's almost given that we give each other gifts mm. as partners. Mm. Mm. But can you be more intentional with it? Imagine that a delivery man gets to your wife's office, receives a message. If you have a delivery downstairs or you have a delivery at the reception, first of all, that journey towards the reception, she's wondering, what is it? What could it What can it be? Who sent it to me? What could it be? What, what's happening? Why am I? So that journey, then she gets there, then she receives it, and then she's trying to unbox. What is this? Who sent it? Lo and behold, it's her husband. Mm. You live in the same house. You could have sent that gift to the house, but you decided to send it to her at work. One, there's something it does to you when you see that that person was that intentional. By her bedside, she just discovers the gift there. Mm. In building friendship, you have mm -hmm. to be creative. Once in a while, those gifts of time surprise the mm. person. Gift of time. Show up. Go to the office. When is closing? When are you closing? Seven today. You show up at seven o'clock. Ah, uh, what are you doing here? Let's 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 delay. There's traffic. Let's hang out here. Mm. Those little little times. So it's not just gift physical. Time. The gift of time yeah. is very, very so not just important. physical gift. Give your partner the gift of time. So if you work in a play, maybe you because of your schedule, you work you know separate hours. Mm. You know this. You close. You work night shift. You work day shift. Mm. The gift of time. Okay. So both of you can now work because it means that you can most likely not at home at the same time. Mm. So that gift of time is you intentionally creating space. So there's something we used to do at. We, there was a time it was like that for us. Mm. Whenever you're around, I'm not around. So what we now do, what we were doing then was he would call me and say, so, so, so day is free for me. Is it possible for you to also make it free? And then we'll make that day free and then we'll use that time. Wherever it is we are going, doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we make that day free so we can spend time oh. together. So you can be that intentional. Mm. Even if your work schedule does not permit that you go okay. to your partner, you're going through a challenging period in your marriage. Oh. 
financially uh, that's one mm. most as in not only financially but most likely financially all the ill health of a family member yeah is telling on your friendship that's one the other one is um on your relationship people have not been friends so there's a lot of unforgiveness in between mm. resentment how do you move from there at the, with all of these things we've said now, I think we should now, run off with that. Let, let me say it's important to understand that the place of a counselor mm -hmm. and a relationship co coach in your marriage so i'm just saying this to say let's take this apart there are certain relationship issues and conflict you have that you have to see a, a trained counselor and a coach we were friends when things were working in conflict times in challenging times like this become more of friends mm -hmm. i'll tell you one thing that my wife has done over the years you know she stops she stopped some time ago but i know it's her schedule but she used to do that I, I felt so crazy in love. So, woman, oh this is a reminder. Okay. My wife opens the gates. At that time, I was really like, compound. every time. Right? <laughs> I'm talking like 100% of that time. If, if I come home 200 times, my wife opens the gate. Not my children. Not the gate man. My wife opens the gate by herself. And the first thing I get, she takes the bag from me or whatever it is, and she gives me a hug. Mm. That hug is like, all the problems I've gone through at the day is like, now, over time, as I getting used to getting the hug, means a lot to me. So during conflict times, deepen your friendship. Do more of what you used to do. Mm. What the situation do was more. normal. Do more. Talk more. Discuss more. Chat more. That's one way to resolve mm. uh, uh, issues. There are three kinds of friendship again. Friendship with yourself. Friendship with your friends. Friendship with your spouse. Mm. The reason why some people are not friends with their spouse is that they are still it's it's a carryover anger one thing we also try to do at difficult times is to be kinder to each other yeah so we are usually say that again, we say try that as much as possible to be kind to each other but when things are even tough we try to be kinder to each other so it means if he leave if he left this thing here and he's not supposed to leave it here when things are tough i won't talk about it i would have talked about it when things are okay but when i see that we are going through a season of with plenty of pressure or a challenging period I try to let some things go. It's not everything I must address. Because the person already has a lot of battle, you know, going on. A lot of battles going on within. Just like I already know because we're going through a lot at that point. Okay. So it's not fair for me to try to add to it. Can you just picture your partner's struggle? I once had a couple come to me and the lady was complaining a lot about what her husband wasn't doing. And we got talking. We said several things. But I can remember this particular one I told her. I said, can you picture your husband as your son? If it was your son going through this challenge that your husband is going through, how will you see it? What kind of support will you give him? So I told her, I said, sometimes you need to learn to be your husband's mother. Your spouse will go through challenges sometimes that what he needs is a mother. You need to learn to be a mother at that point. Your spouse will go through challenges sometimes that what he needs is a friend. You need to learn to be a friend at that point. Your spouse will go through challenges sometimes that what he needs is a wife. You need to learn to be a wife at that point. Your spouse will go through challenges sometimes that what he needs is a pastor. You need to be the prayerful one and support him at that time. Sometimes your child's spouse will go through challenges. What he needs is an ATM card. You need to be the one supplying the money at that time. So it's cool. It's okay for you to be the one supporting your spouse through a difficult season. Just know how to switch, how to transition from one role and switch from one role to another, both for the man and for the woman. We are saying it's not easy. It's not easy anywhere else. It's not like we have it all figured out. We have our challenges, but we've learned to understand that we are in this together, and we are a team, and we're going through all of this together. So prioritize your partner. Be more intentional with building friendship. Create fun activities. Say nice things to your partner. Intentionally give your partner meaningful hugs when you pass by the side, when you pass by each other, even in the house. Be intentional. Five, ten seconds, meaningful hug exchange it before you pass initially it may not it may not look so if you have not been doing it it may look a bit difficult and mm. awkward but you need to continue so you become better the thank you you give us a hundred percent thank you for that so you need to continue so after a while it, it becomes a part of you it is not easy to start something something you haven't been doing but over time it becomes better and if you already have built friendship with your partner then can you make it better can you now be more consistent with it? If there's anything we've said here, because we talked about conflict a lot, because you cannot build friendship without without ending conflict. If there's anything we need to pick here is, what is your partner's apology language? Your partner may not usually say, I'm sorry, but they do other things to say they are sorry. Can you begin to accept your partner's apology language as sorry so that you can continue with your friendship? Can you prioritize your friendship over your conflict so it's okay not to win the argument, but you keep your friendship? 
one day your friends and family in fact your friends and everybody will be gone what you have is your partner i mean you cannot be friends with some people forever but your partner will always be there mm. so why not make that relationship meaningful so that even when others are gone what you have with your partner will sustain you i mean i can stay with my husband for if i even everybody goes i can be with him for as long as without missing any other person because we we'll build that friendship you're welcome yeah we also talked about making your family members know that your spouse is your priority i mean my husband has done that so wonderfully well so let me just share this my sister-in-law is actually on this call and she can actually attest to this many years ago when um we got married one of the fears i had was that my husband has quite as many sisters and some they are older than me. So I was even wondering, how am I going to cope? I mean, so many sisters, I hope I'm not going to have issues and all of that. And, you know, large family, I'm from a very small family. He's from a large family. And everywhere looked like it, they looked like there were too many for me. I said, what kind of crowd is this? Am I going to be able to cope in this space? But he tried as much as possible to make me comfortable. Each time we appeared in the entire family, you will see making efforts to protect me. Oh, leave my wife. Don't stress my wife. I mean, my sister-in-law can testify to this. Don't stress my wife. Do this. My wife, he would go. Maybe I'm in the kitchen with my sister-in-laws. He would come in. They say, what are you looking for? I'm looking for my wife. Then he will go. Then he will come again. He just comes to mark that register. So right now, you don't need to, nobody in the family doubts that I'm his priority because he has made that clear. That's how I've made it clear. So, I mean, I'm very close to my mom and my sister. But my sister and my mom know that my husband is my priority. My children know that my, their father is my priority. So they know, they've all, everybody has, they've all accepted it. So can you get to a place where you make your partner your priority and let people accept it? These people have their own lives to live. So let, don't let them be in your own way. Yes, everybody, they all have their lives to live. Don't let them be in your way. Mm. So make your partner your priority and let people know it, that your partner is your priority if you know someone whom you think this video will be useful to you can share it with them you can also like share your comment the last words mm. there are three kinds of friendship i repeat what i said the friendship you plan to have the friendship you actually have during marriage and the friendship you wish you had make the friendship you plan to have the friendship you actually have so you don't wish you had it the other person out there is not better than your partner and the other marriage is not better than yours this marriage our marriage is not better in any way than yours the difference is what you do with it people only look better because you are not living with them in the same space so you are not seeing everything and they only show you what they want you to see but your partner is showing you everything so you are judging your partner with everything mm. but you are judging others with the good sides they keep showing you mm. That's why it looks like other people, I mean, other women are better, other wives are better than your wife, other husbands better than your husband. It's because those people have shown you the good side. Nobody shows you their bad side. Other marriages look better than yours because they show you the good side. They are not showing the bad side. Mm. So nobody out there is better than your spouse. No marriage out there is better than your marriage. If you put the work that it requires, you will do better than those people you are looking at. So my encouragement for you is, please, can you take your spouse from wherever you have placed your spouse before now? and bring them to a new place you know a place of respect love friendship and then be intentional about building it, working on it until your mind accepts it until the whole of you accepts it and it becomes a culture with you if you do this you realize that your life will be sweeter you think you're doing it for your partner but one thing you realize that you have more peace you are happier you feel more fulfilled and you're going to raise a better family and your children will be better than you because they will build even LD, LDR marriages for what they've seen happen in your home Thank you again for joining us. Do have a very beautiful week. Father, we thank you for this session and the grace you have given us to do this. I will pray for as many who have listened, whatever point it is they've taken and have decided to work with. Lord Jesus, we pray for grace to be able to work with it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that testimonies were abound from this session and that at the end of the marriages will be better. For everyone who have listened up today, your marriage will be better than it was before now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for every marriage struggling. We pray in the name of Jesus that God will bring bliss into that home. We pray bliss into that home. Whatever bliss means to you, it will be restored and return, it will be returned into that home in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you need to do to bring about that bliss, heaven will bring it your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for someone here who is watching right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. As you begin to do these things, your spouse will make it easy for you to do it. Amen. Some of us have had challenges because your spouse is not cooperating. Mm. I pray for your partner right now. Mm. As you begin to leave your partner alone, can you work on your own self? Mm. Mm. As you begin to take steps towards improving your own self and your relationship with your partner, mm. I pray in the name of Jesus that your partner will receive it well. Amen. Your partner will respond to you. Amen. According, your partner will be responsible 
responsive. Your Amen. partner will encourage you. Amen. And your marriage will be better in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every marriage at the verge of Thank breaking you, up. You as you come you across you this come video, I declare in the name of Jesus Amen. that that peace in that home is restored. Amen. And this economy Amen. will work in the favor of your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You the things you want will come to you on the platter of gold. It will come to you faster Amen. than you expected. Amen. Whatever is the biggest burden and concern in your home and in your family, we address that issue right now. And we declare in the name of Jesus that he received the attention of heaven. Amen. In the name of Jesus. From Amen. this moment, it becomes a testimony. Amen. This new week is easier for you than you thought in the Amen. name of Jesus. Help is arising for you, for your partner. Whatever area your partner is struggling with, maybe with their career, their finances, and you've been trying and it looks like it's getting tougher and tougher, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Ease is coming. Amen. Ease is coming. Help is coming for your partner. Amen. Help is coming for your partner. Amen. As you as you set out your heart to build friendship, receive this to intentionally pray for your partner. And as you pray for your partner, receive the right words to use in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive grace to tolerate, to be patient Thank with your partner you. in the name of Jesus. The Lord will preserve you, will preserve your marriage. Your marriage Thank will not you, go down. You will not lose your partner. You will not lose your life. You will Amen. not lose your children. Amen. No challenges. Anything that will cause emergencies. That will call any devourer that wants to come up in your home will raise a standard against it in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. I will pray for any single listening to this because mm. you have invested you your right. time to listen to this. Mm. You will marry right. Thank you. This video, as you have watched it, is working for you as a seed. Mm. And the harvest will come in your marriage. Amen. Because you have watched this, you will marry the right person. Amen. You will get the right kind of wisdom. You will apply it and it will work for you. Amen. Your spouse will make it easy for you to do the right thing. Amen. People have gotten married to partners and they want her to actually really have a good marriage. But their partners didn't allow them. That will not be your testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. And we declare even concerning our home, O oh Lord, that our home shall continually be preserved. Amen. Evil is far from us. It's far from our children. Amen. It's far from our household. So it is far from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As many people that will watch this video after going through marital crisis having challenges we call for your healing in the name of jesus amen for your home and for your family in the name of jesus amen. receive all that you want receive all that you need receive all the resources you need to build that marriage where you want it to amen. be amen in the name of jesus amen thank you again for joining us god bless you